Alright, what is up guys, it is Storm back here with another video, and in this one I am bringing you Mightless, the My Hero Academia Story Part 26 by the Mysterious Banana. Now if you want to check this story out for yourself, the link to it will be down in the description below. But before the video begins, if you like the content you're seeing, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. I mean, they're all free, so why not? If you want some dope channel merch, the link to that will be down in the description below. And if you want to see more of me, be sure to go check out my other channels and go follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, which will all be linked down below. But without further ado... Why don't we just dive right on in. Izuku banged his head on the desk over and over, moaning in embarrassment. Small mites? Small mites? What was I thinking? I should have just gone with Deku or something. Thank God I declined at the last second. God, was that embarrassing. He thought as most of the students were discussing with which pro hero they want to go with. I'm going with Mountain Lady, Mineta replied to his classmates. Of course you would, Ojiro replied, fully expecting it. Meanwhile, Aizawa passed along a personalized list of those who got drafted, leaving both Izuku and Todoroki with a stack of papers to read through. Skimming through the list, the young undercover villain saw several heroes are on his target list in the past. Big Band, Beowulf, Beetle Man, Caviar. The list went on. Hold the phone. All Might's agency drafted you? Some of the students called out as Izuku turned to Todoroki. Yeah, I know it's odd, especially since he's been teaching us here in UA, but this is clearly his name here on the list, the ice-haired student pointed out. Hearing this, Izuku lifted an eyebrow in suspicion. I recall all my teaching here for unbeknownst reasons, but this, is he now also accepting interns? How peculiar, the boy thought. So, which hero are you going for? asked Ochako, appearing behind him, startling him. The green-haired teen jerked to his left, facing Ochako. I don't know yet. There's just too many to choose from, Izuku replied. Well, I'm going for the Gunhead Agency, she replied. Gunhead? You mean that toughest nail scrapper? Why him? I would have expected you to go for 13 or something, Izuku asked. Yeah, but in the end, my fight with Bakugo got me thinking. Getting stronger allows for more opportunities, and just doing things the same old way is kind of limiting, or something. She said cheerfully while striking a pose. Ah, uh, yes, I see, I see. Izuku mumbled as he was helplessly locked on another never-ending conversation with her. As the class ended, while every student fluttered out of the classroom, All Might came dashing in front of the door right as Todoroki was heading out, in a peculiar pose as well. Hello there, young Todoroki, All Might said in his usual valiant tone. All Might, why are you here? Todoroki asked, in such a peculiar pose, no less. It's about your dad, All Might said in a much more serious tone, making Todoroki shudder. Meet me at my office. We have some matters to discuss. At All Might's office, Todoroki entered his office, noticing All Might, sitting on a black leather sofa that barely fit him. Gesturing him to sit on the couch right across him. Sitting down, All Might poured him a cup of green tea. Listen, young Todoroki. I've been meaning to ask you concerning your father. Endeavor. How is he doing recently? Asked All Might. Todoroki looked surprised. What... what do you mean? Asked the young student. Your dad's not doing well, young Todoroki. His rank dropped into the three digits ever since he confessed to having abused both his wife and kids. He was hit with a two-month suspension of his license and a 10 million yen fine to his agency. I tried talking to him, asking if he was fine or not, but he refused to talk back, All Might explained. I have no other choice but to ask you. He's doing everything he can to rebrand and clear his name. But besides that, he's doing fine, Todoroki answered. He should be able to reclaim his spot in the top 10 soon enough. All Might shook his head. One cannot clear his name easily, young Todoroki. The top 10 is a slippery slope, and even the slightest mess up could send your rank tumbling down. While most people believe I have nothing to do with this, I believe this is also my fault, All Might replied. Why is that? asked Todoroki. Endeavor and I are close friends, Todoroki. If there was anyone who would have known he was an abusive father and husband, it would be me. The fact that I was too naive to think he would do such a thing, despite it clearly being written all over him, means I am just as guilty as he was. I want to make up for that, hence why I drafted you, All Might answered. I was wondering that, although there was something that puzzled me. Why did you suddenly decide to teach at UA? The press said it's been all over that news, Todoroki asked. That's the other reason why I called you here, young Todoroki, All Might explained. My quirk, one for all, is a very powerful quirk 
one that allows me to stockpile power. And unleashing in bursts. Why is it called one for all then? Shouldn't it just be power stocking or something? Asked Todoroki. That's where you're wrong. You see, this quirk isn't originally mine. It was given to me, All Might explained. Todoroki sat there speechless. He, he couldn't believe what he was hearing. You see, prior to all of this, I was quirkless. This quirk was given to me by Nana Shimura, the number one hero of the last generation. It is a quirk that can be passed down from people to people, becoming stronger and stronger with each successor, All Might explained. The young student felt his heart sink. He was in awe, in shock, biting his lips till he could taste blood, just to make sure he wasn't dreaming. And suddenly, he saw him, like a balloon, deflate into a withered skeleton of a man. But, I can feel my time slowly withering away. It won't be long now. I give myself, what, four or five more months? And that's only if I don't fight anymore. This is why I came to teach at UA. So that I can find the next successor, he explained. Clutching the sofa, Todoroki was trying to hold back tears. Trying not to let this reveal ruin his image of his hero. No, no you can't go. Not yet. All Might, I, I admired you my entire life. I wanted to be just like you. You inspired me, returned me the hope my father had taken from me. You can't. Todoroki uttered on the verge of tears. I understand your pain, young Todoroki. But I assure you... Quirk or without quirk, I will always be All Might, All Might continued. But why? Why tell me this? asked Todoroki. Because I want you to be the next successor to One for All, All Might answered. Todoroki froze. What? All Might took a sip of his tea. You always believed in me, yet I wasn't there to help you. Even when you finally met me, I couldn't decipher that you had lived a tortured life. I am the symbol of peace, yet I couldn't even help a single boy that was screaming help me deep inside him. How could I call myself a hero after that? I may not be around for long, so I would like you to take my quirk, so that I can repay you for all those years you suffered because of my negligence. Upon hearing this, Todoroki couldn't help but smile, as though all those calls for help have finally been answered. I'll think about it, just not now, he answered, as he got up and walked towards the exit. Oh, and All Might? Yes, young Todoroki, asked All Might. See you at the internship. Outside of All Might's office, however, unbeknownst to both of them, Izuku eavesdropped, and every word that came out of All Might's mouth just made him want to brutally murder the two right then and there. When he heard Todoroki head towards the door, Izuku had to bite his own lips in order to calm down. Regret not helping him, huh? Wow, how nice of you. It's not like you nearly drove a quirkless kid to suicide, you fucking piece of shit, he thought to himself, as he headed back to the hideouts. As he entered the bar, he met face to face with Stain and Spinner, who seemed to be having some sort of conversation, but upon getting closer, he saw Stain's annoyed face. Hey there, Mightless, now that you're here, can you get this guy off me? He's really getting on my nerves, Stain said, pointing at Spinner, who was screaming fanboy gibberish. Alright then, hey Spinner, stop jacking off to your idol and get over here. We only have two days to pull off this plan, and I don't want your obsession over Stain to get in the way. Got it? Izuku said sternly. But, but boss, this is, this is Stain. The Stain, Spinner pleaded. Get over here, Izuku yelled, losing his temper while punching through a table, making Spinner and Kurogiri shudder. Stain, on the other hand, laughed. Looks like someone had a shitty day, Stain replied, handing his boss a pint of beer, which Izuku gulped down in one shot. Izuku then proceeded to flop on the counter, letting out an annoyed groan, and asking the bartender for another shot. You're gonna bust a liver if you keep drinking like that, Kurogiri commented in a worried tone. I don't care, I had a shitty day, and the only cure is alcohol. Izuku grunted like a man during his midlife crisis. Suddenly, he felt two smooth, dainty hands on his back. Will a back rub do? Asked a familiar female voice. As Izuku's lips curved upwards. Ah, Toga. You always know how to cheer me up on days like these, he said, not even looking back. The blonde smiled as she leaned on his back as her hands made their way down to a certain area. As Izuku felt shivers down his spine, he smiled in anticipation. As Stain looked at the two disgusted, suddenly, Dobby came bursting through the door once again. We tracked down Shigaraki, Dobby shouted. A 
Upon hearing this, Izuku immediately got up, causing Toka to stare angrily at Dobby for stopping her from getting intimate with the one she loved. The young boss walked up to Dobby, asking for the maps of Hosu, all the while calling Giren on the phone. Hey there, Giren. How's it going? Izuku greeted. Not bad, Mightless. Not bad at all. Our bank's looking pretty saturated right now. In fact, I think we can use this money to upgrade our members, you know? Give them some equipment to complement their quirks? Asked Giren. Sounds good. What do you have to offer? The young boss asked back, while heading to the basement to activate the Hunter Nomus. Give me two days and I can provide Dobby some gas gauntlets, which emit gas to amplify his fire attacks. Spinner with an arsenal of swords and knives. Magni with the lighter, more compact purposed magnet. Mustard with a newly upgraded gas mask that also amplifies his sleeping gas and a blood-sucking needle pack for Toga, replied the sleazy salesman. May I include an extra piece of equipment for Toga? asked Izuku. Sure thing. What would you like me to provide for the girl? asked Giren. Give that bitch a cannon, Izuku said, as the tanks drained, revealing the Nomu's lifeless bodies. Bitches love cannons. Two days passed as the internship had begun. With the students wishing good luck to each other, Izuku waved goodbye at his classmates, but was still legitimately pissed off at one specific classmate, excluding Kotsky, of course, Todoroki, which he started to resent for getting the attention he deserved, and was worried about another one, Ida. Not because he knew that Ida might get himself killed, trying to take down the hero killer alone, but rather because he knew where Stain was. Somehow, it might interfere in their plans for capturing Shigaraki. The boy himself, he had made sure he selected a hero that usually operates in Hosu. The hero went by the name of Bat Dude. His quirk, Bat gave him all the abilities of a bat. Before meeting the hero at his agency, however, he took a detour, climbing up to the roof of a vacant building, where the squad appeared through Kurogiri's portal. Have the Nomus been deployed here? asked Izuku. Yup, and Stain has already been deployed, answered Kurogiri. And I suppose you have eyes on him 24-7? asked Isaku. Of course. We have slipped a webcam in his scarf. Anything he does, we can see. This will make sure he doesn't get sidetracked killing heroes, Kurogiri explained. Any signs of Shigaraki yet? asked Isaku. None yet. But rest assured, with the amount of Nomus we have in a 10 mile radius, he isn't going anywhere. We just need to slowly close this metaphorical circle, and eventually, you will hit a border, explaining the dark bartender. Good. Then I must get going, Izuku said, jumping off the building. Using his air quirk to cushion the fall, Izuku made his way to the agency. In the meantime, the Nomus were perched in hidden areas, with the order to burst out and attack the second they see Shigaraki. Meanwhile, Stain, Toga, Sachi, and Irina patrol the streets. Spinner, Mustard, Mr. Compress, and Magni stayed at a nearby inn, waiting for the time to come when Shigaraki is found. It was a normal day for some, but for others, the hunt has begun. Right off the bat, Bat Dude pissed him off to no end. He kept on ranting about his tragic backstory, where during one night, his parents were nearly killed by a common thug, but survived. That experience left him scarred, so he fought crime using the millions of dollars from his parents' fortune. He didn't know what made him more angry. The fact that he ranted about being a tortured man, despite owning a million dollar mansion, his lackluster reason to become a hero, the millions of dollars he's wasting on decorating his office, or the fact that all of his sidekicks were orphans and were forced to fight in their underwear with a ridiculous looking eye mask. Not that he learned much anyways, as all he did was all the dirty work, while Bat Dude took all the credit. The sheer arrogance radiating from the guy made Izuku want to slit his throat in his sleep. Before you know it, day one ended, and there's still no sign of Shigaraki. Not wanting to stick around, he wandered off, heading to the alleyway to assist in the hunt. Now, if I was covered in hands, where would I hide? Izuku said to himself. He first called his team, seeing if they could track down the escapee. No luck. It seemed as though Shigaraki was just that good at hiding. The next day rolled around, and it was the same old routine. Fight some thugs, bad dude takes all the credit. Fight some dudes, bad dude takes all the credit. It drove him mad. Eventually, Izuku had enough. On the second day, while bad dude was signing autographs and ditched him while on patrol to go hang out with some girls, Izuku wandered off, heading out of the Nomu's barrier to a nearby cafe. He needed a drink. However, when entering the cafe, things looked weird. One thing, it was beyond dusty, like no one cleaned the place for years. Secondly, besides the barista, there was no one there. Not questioning anything, he walked up to the barista, asking for a smoothie. 
That will be 400 yen, answered the barista. Suddenly, as Izuku was reaching out to hand him the money, the barista grabbed him by the wrist, leaving only one pinky off his wrist. Looking up in shock, he recognized the barista, Tomura Shigaraki. Shigaraki? But how? How did you manage to slip past the net I made? Asked Izuku in shock. So you did try and surround me. Figures. But I guess you never took into account the fact that I can also disguise myself. Shigaraki smiled. Bastard. So this is where you've been hiding? Izuku asked, trying to break free. Nah. This was just a temporary base I set up after killing everyone here. The ex-villain replied. That explained all the dust, Izuku grunted. So what now? What will you do to me? Kill me? Shigaraki gave him an evil grin. Not quite yet. First, how about we pay mom a visit? Shigaraki asked with glee. Izuku trembled. No. Yes. Shigaraki laughed back. Cry. Despair. I wanted to see you like this for so long. Cry, cry, cry. Suddenly, a loud bang was heard as a bullet came flying in the room, separating the two. Izuku, confused, scouted around, but saw no one. Just then, he heard another loud bang as another bullet flew in, aiming right at Shigaraki, who only narrowly avoided it, grazing his shoulder. Izuku got a better view off where the bullet came from. Judging from the trajectory, there could only be one place where the shot came from, the high ground. Just then, he saw a faint, just distinct silhouette in the abandoned building across the shop and smiled. It was Toga. Bitches love cannons, Toga yelled out firing another round, this one hitting Shigaraki in the calf as he tried to run. Izuku seeing this called all of his team to his location. Spinner's group, upon getting the message, shot out of their rooms in excitement. Stain, wiping the blood off his blade, and made his way to where Shigaraki was found, disposing the body of the mangled corpse that was once Bat-Dude in the trash. Suddenly, loud explosions rang out, as the Nomos were going berserk, a protocol programmed in their brain once Shigaraki was found with the goal of attracting all the heroes to them instead of towards Shigaraki. While the rest of the league were on their way, Toga got off her perch, running to regroup with Izuku, while Shigaraki limped his way to the exits. Reaching the cafe, she leaped into Izuku's arms. Oh, Izu, I was so worried, Toga muttered. Thank you, Toga, but how did you find me? Izuku asked. I had to make sure you were doing okay after seeing how badly Bad Dude exploited you. I was going to follow you to the cafe until Shigaraki grabbed you. I couldn't just run in as he would use you as a hostage, she explained. Good thing I gave you that cannon, Izuku smiled. Yeah, and thank you. By the way, she said, clutching her newly bought rifle, painted pink with the words, Bitches love cannons, printed on it. Now, let's give chase. Shigaraki is getting away, she said, pointing to their target, who was driving away in his motorcycle. Right, Izuku said, creating a windboard below them and charging after their prey. Shigaraki, however, had an idea. To run into the heart of the action and where he saw the fire was coming from and lure the villains into the heroes that will no doubt be there. Just then, bullets came flying in as Izuku and Toga were dead on his tracks. The man swerved left and right, dodging bullets and wind blades alike as he hurried down the road. Up ahead, however, there appeared to be a roadblock, a toppled over delivery truck with Mustard, Spinner, Mr. Compress, and Magby waiting. We got him, Mr. Compress said, throwing a bunch of marbles at Shigaraki which turned into car, scrap metal, and pieces of the road as Magni tried to slow down the motorcycle with his magnetism. Shigaraki, however, seeing how Izuku was gaining on him, veered sideways. As a wind blade missed him and came flying at the group, Magni was forced to unmagnetize Shigaraki's vehicle. He used the debris compressed through as a shield. Just then, Shigaraki used the temporary wall as a ramp ramping over the blockade right as it was collapsing, and right as Izuku's windboard dispelled. Damn, he got away, Izuku grunted. He won't get far, Spinner said nonchalantly. Stain is up ahead. Stain was made aware that Shigaraki was closing in near him. He was waiting, patiently at an alleyway, waiting for him to pass by. Just then, he felt something incoming and prepped his blade. Recipro, before the attacker could finish, Stain immediately cut him down. You're not Shigaraki, commented Stain, looking at the guy he cut down. The kid got back up, looking more pissed than ever. A man in a scarf, red as blood, armed to the teeth with blades. You must be Stain the hero killer, right? He said angrily. I've been pursuing you. I didn't expect to meet you so soon. I am. Stain pointed his blade right at him. I can see it in your eyes. You're out for revenge, aren't you? Stain commented. Watch your mouth, kid. 
or your age won't be enough to save you. The kid got back up. Save me? Do you even consider me a threat? Listen up, you criminal. He clenched his teeth. I am the younger brother of a hero you attacked. The brother of an amazing hero, among other heroes. I have come to you in my brother's stead. Inherit my mantle. Tenya. A memory flashed by him. I am Ingenium, the hero that will stop you, Ida exclaimed. Is that so? asked Stain. Then, you will die. I still.